Hi guys, Jangro here, and welcome back to All the Mods 8. In this episode, we are going to take a trip uh, and, take, and find a mangrove swamp and get some mangrove trees and some mud so we can have that cool 1.19 new building blocks. Then we're going to get into immersive engineering and integrate that with Create. As you can see, shaders are back. The next bit of the video is going to have shaders off because I recorded that before. Then we'll switch back to having shaders on. So there's some cool stuff coming. Stick around. We seem to have captured a wandering trader on our belt and... He's got witch hazel saplings, and I bought one for five emeralds. I have no idea what it is, but my curiosity was too much. Let's just plant it over here and see what we get. Godspeed, witch hazel sapling. Okay, before we get started in on some modded stuff, we're in 1.19 and we've got some new stuff. Let's go take a quick look around and do some exploring. I said that I wasn't going to do too much exploring and that was because of the world gen. I was mostly worried about create stuff, but now that create is in the pack, I'm less concerned about generating too much world around me. So let's go take a look around. Maybe we can find a mangrove swamp. I seem to have offended. Pow, pow, pow. Cow, cow, get out of the way. That's tough. What in the world? Oh, I foolishly did not bring a bed with me, but I found a waystone. Let's grab that. Nice. We're going to need to find a bed. Or we make a boat and head out into the ocean. That is pretty cool. Well, can't pass up an above water shipwreck. Whoa! Maybe we can pass it up. And it's a village with an engineer house, so we are going to be able to get a few more storage crates. So that's good news. So long, village. Thanks for the bed and the waystone. Appreciate that. Let's continue on. What is this thing? I see chests. Is this friendly or is it dangerous? Let's see. It's dangerous. Wow. Okay. And I just got slowness from that guy. We'll leave that alone for now. Clearly, I'm not feeling very tough. The knockback from that skeleton's arrow was crazy. And he hit me with slowness, so that was that was certain death. So I found a swamp, and a slimy bee just flew into this slimy nest. Let's grab it. Nice. There's another one. I don't know how many of these we'll need, but let's let's go. Grab, grab every one we can. And Look at this. It's a mangrove swamp. Fantastic. We got mud. We can make mud, but let's grab a bunch of mud anyway. This is a new block in 119. And I think we can make bricks out of this. We'll just grab a whole bunch of mud. And we want these propagules, they're called. Mangrove propagule. Oh, forgot about vein mining here going to do a number of my axe, but let's get a bunch of mangrove wood. This might be our building material that we'll use. Let's get some more propagules. So we can grow our own. So we get eight propagules. We've got a bunch of mangrove roots, some mangrove logs. And that is it for our axe. But let's do this. Let's Grab one of these waystones that we have. Since we found two of them, let's just put this down right here. Call that the mangrove swamp. And now let's head home. This is a gatekeeper house for the Blue Skies mod. Yes, it is. So our mangrove swamp also has a gatekeeper house. So we'll have to remember that. Home is this way, I think. And since it's a blood moon, we cannot sleep. Let's just make a beeline for home. There's that blood moon and a pirate ship. You know, no big deal. And a, another ship. Seems to be a big, some sort of big skeleton structure. I think I recognize these cliffs. These are pretty close to home. Must be up ahead. Another sky ship of sorts. That's pretty crazy. All right, and here is our Colosseum. Oh, okay. So we're close to home now. That's Colosseum is near our home. There's our first village that we raided. Right around the bend here should be home. 
This is this is not friendly. There's home. Just as the sun comes up, we make it home. That figures. Let's just get into our house. Maybe we can. We missed sleeping. Well, we made it. Oh, look at that. The mangrove swamp is 2,200 blocks away. Okay, here we are back home again, and we're going to get started on some new stuff. Here's our create millstone machine that we created last week, and we've got shaders on again, and it's working with create. The updates for ATM8 are coming fast and furious, and they just updated and fixed the problems with shaders and create, so... Hopefully we're good to go from here and don't get any crashes. In order to do anything really useful with Create, we need Brass. And getting Brass with just Create is pretty involved. You have to go to the Nether. I'm just trying to avoid heading into the Nether before I need to. And we need to catch a Blaze in a Blaze Burner in order to make Brass in Create. So it's, you know, it's not difficult, but, you know, it takes some exploration in the, in the Nether to do that. But thankfully with Immersive Engineering, we can make Brass really easily. I don't think that there's any immersive engineering quests yet. Instead, we will make the engineer's manual right here, which is a book and a lever. And we've got a lever and we've got a book. Well, we don't have a book. We can make a book. And now we can craft the engineer's manual, which is the first step in immersive engineering. Of all the books I recommend that you really read through, it's this one. Immersive engineering is pretty involved and there's a lot of great information in here. And especially because later on, uh, we're going to get in, well, not even later on, right away, we're getting into multi-block structures. So I won't read through the book with you, uh, but we're going to set up a Coke oven. And for a Coke oven, we need 27 Coke bricks. Let's take a look at Coke bricks. And that is, we get three of them. So we need nine of these recipes. So nine times four, 36 clay balls and 36 bricks and sandstone. Huh. I'm not sure I've got nine sandstone around. We might have to go hunting for that. We have sand. Can we make sand, sandstone out of sand? Four sand. Make a sandstone. All right, then. We're good. Uh, I think I've got some bricks and clay here. Okay, let's make two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of those. And now we can make... Coke bricks, Coke brick, 27, because that's a three by three by three structure. And we'll see that in a second. We also need an engineer's hammer, which we already made. And I'm probably going to end up making another one because I am so disorganized. You recall, we already made an engineer's hammer. We might have, we might have broken it. We need string and, and two iron and sticks. So uh, there was a couple iron in here. Let's just grab those. Let's grab these sticks and some string. If you're short on string, you can get some hemp seed crops going, harvest those, and you've got string, all the string you could ever need. So this was, if I remember, like this. Now we need an engineer's hammer like that. And before we head out, we just need to grab some coal and steal it. And steal it from our furnaces. Okay, now we need to kind of plan ahead. These machines get pretty big, and I'm thinking that we'll want to just kind of build build up here. We want to be close enough to our water wheel that we can get rotational power around. So let's just put the coke oven right here. So we take coke bricks and we put down a three by three structure. And it's solid, it's not hollow, like some structures in some mods are. And we just hit it right here in this block with the engineer's hammer. And there we go, we've got a Coke oven. Now we just right click on it and put some coal in here. And this is it takes a long time to cook this. It's gonna turn this coal into Coke. And it's also gonna create creosote in the process. And now the creosote fills up pretty quickly and you put a bucket in here and it pulls it out. So dealing with it like that is really tedious. And so that's what we're going to use create for to pull the, all the different parts that it's creating out of here and feed it with new coal. We're going to give that a minute. Once we've got some creosote, let's get ourselves ready a bucket. And so we put a bucket right here and there it is. We have coal Coke. No, it's just a half a bucket. So two coal creates a bucket of creosote. Let's look at what's next while we're waiting for that. We're going to next make an alloy kiln. It's, a, it's another multi-block, so we're not going to find the kiln in here, but we will find kiln bricks. 
And for this, we need, again, sandstone and some bricks. And we only need a two by two, so we just need to make two of those. We have everything we need right here. One, two, three, four, I think. I made cream bricks somehow. How did that happen? One, two. Three. What? How did I end up with cream bricks? That's weird. Oh, that's how. So we got to be careful. So if we have um, overlapping recipes, you can you can click this button right here and choose the recipe you want. And now I've gone ahead and blown that, and now I need to get some more sand. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've got some more sandstone. We just needed one more. And now we can make two more kiln brick carefully. And now we have four kiln bricks. And this is easy. We just we'll just put this right over here. Let's let's put down these cream bricks. We can use these. Those are kind of neat. So we're gonna take the output from our Coke oven and send it into a kiln, which we can put right here. Oh, we need, it's two by two by two. We need more of these. Okay, it's getting dark. Let's go sleep and then we'll activate the alloy kiln. So we take our hammer and we hit it right in the middle, in the corner of one of those, and now we have an alloy kiln. Now this requires coal coke. And you see here, this bucket moved down here. Now we have a bucket of creosote and we have coal coke. And this requires coal coke. It won't allow you to use charcoal, coal, whatever. Coal coke is great fuel. It's like double coal. If you're burning coal, it's definitely worth it to turn it into coal coke before you do burn it. And now let's take a look at brass. To make brass in an alloy kiln, we need copper and zinc, and we get two brass ingots. Let's go grab some of that. So we get some zinc and some copper. Let's double these. Okay, copper in there. Let's put the zinc in there. Okay, three zinc, three copper. Probably going to need to put some furnaces over here. Now this should give us, this should be a one-to-one. -one. There we go, we got two. So now we've got brass. Okay, at this point, we've effectively bypassed the uh, creation of brass in Create, which is a pretty involved process. We have to get to the nether. Um, not that difficult, but we got to catch a blaze. So that's something. Uh, we've bypassed that with immersive engineering with this alloy kiln. And now we're going to return the favor on immersive engineering and bypass some IE stuff with Create, namely fluid tanks. And we've got some creosote oil building up in here. And we need to get it out of here because by the time this coal all turns into coal coke, that's going to fill up and stop the whole process. And dealing with that with buckets is kind of tedious. Now, immersive engineering has a massive tank. Let's see if I can find it here. This tank right here holds 512 buckets of fluid. It's pretty big. Um, it's a big multi-block structure. It needs 34 iron sheet metal. It's not the biggest in resource demands. However, it does require that we create a pump and that pump requires electricity. And we just don't have any electricity yet. We only have rotational force from this water wheel. So we don't need electricity yet. We'll get there. But for now, we'll, let's put together a create fluid tank system to pull the creosote oil out of there. So I've kind of planned ahead a little bit. I built this platform here to mark some places planning things out so hopefully that will all come together didn't want to take forever kind of fumbling around here and i've also crafted a bunch of these things so we have fluid pipes from create these things are basically made with copper and, and wood and andesite so shafts and and cogs put together but a lot of uh, copper and these copper plates which we were able to make with the engineer hammer so we don't have any presses yet uh, so let's grab these gearboxes, some gears. We need our wrench, of course. And and yeah, I think that's 
going to be everything we need at this point. Let's go to sleep and start in the daylight. While we're waiting for the sunset, let me introduce you to my new, two new friends. These two Shibas I found. They're not tamed yet. I happen to have a couple leads, um, but no bones to tame them with. Um, I'm pretty sure we can tame them the same way as wolves. So that's pretty cool. We'll, we'll play with those guys later. All right. Oh, and here we have a wandering trader. Nothing too special. We did meet up with a trader earlier who sold me a few on dripstone, uh, which we have right here, these pointed dripstone, which we're gonna use to make lava after we figure uh, this setup out right here. So to get fluid out of this Coke oven, we can basically, I think, put this pipe anywhere. So I'm gonna put it right here. And then we need a pump, mechanical pump on here. That was the wrong direction. Let's try that again. There we go. Now these arrows are the direction of flow and we're just gonna, going to need to swap that around because we're gonna be pulling out in this direction. And we'll right click with the wrench on this pipe and you can see it creates windows on any pipe. All right, so right here now we're gonna put these tanks. And we just put one tank here, that's eight buckets, much smaller than that 500 buckets for the immersive engineering tank. But we can grow these tanks kind of infinitely now that's 24 buckets. You can have, I think, up to a two by two footprint on these tanks and as tall as you want, I believe. I don't know if there's any limit. Um, I've built one pretty high and never really found a limit to that, but there might be one. Anyway, we can get a lot of buckets in these tanks. And again, they're really cheap. They're just some copper. It's great to have some, some uses for copper. Now that's it. There is our creosote system. We just need to now, uh, we need some shafts. Left the shafts behind. Yes, I did. And we just need to expand off of this side of our water wheels, just like this, and put a gearbox right here. And then we need to run this out in this direction. And another gearbox right here to turn the corner and we need a cog right here to turn this pump and now we just need to get a couple of vertical gearboxes I think turn in this direction not sure that that let's put the let's put the I think it helps to have the shaft in place all right, now when we put this gearbox in here, we're gonna run up and, and watch the Prius come up because I think it's gonna be working. Where's that vertical gearbox we had? And oh, there we go, run. Is it coming out? Oh, so when we connected things, it changed the direction of this the pump again. This happens, I don't know why, but that's good because it did, it, allowed us to get up here. So we're going to right click with the wrench and turn it around and the creosote should flow. Let's see, we've got four buckets in here so far. Here we go. There it comes. Nice. And that's flowing in here pretty slowly because our gears are turning slowly. But that's totally fine. Now the thing about create tanks and vaults which hold items, you can't get stuff out. If we had a bucket and right click it wouldn't pull the stuff out. We have to use create methods, more pipes and pumps to pull the fluids out. And we'll check that out later. Okay, now let's take what we just learned and make some automatic lava generation. And I got this idea because I ran into this trader earlier who sold me this two pointed dripstone for my last five emeralds. So here we are. Um, let's get some cobblestone. We've got some dirt and let's build a dripstone set up. We've got cauldrons. We need to put these right here. And on top of them, uh, two blocks up, we need some cobblestone or any, any stone block that we can put our dripstone on. And the way this works is that if we get lava up there on top, we're going to have lava generation. Uh, so you know, a few more glass, probably build that frame for the lava. And I mean, what's a lava structure without it being built with glass? So let's, let's build this thing with glass. 
so we can see the lava up there. Okay, so now we put our buckets of lava in here. I just went off and, and got this lava up there from, from the north, fought some villagers for it. That's when I found the those Shebas. So that was a productive trip. And let's clear this out. And there we go. We've got lava generation. So these dripstone, so you can see them dripping lava. And this takes a long time. This can take like 20 minutes in real life, minutes to generate a bucket of lava in these cauldrons. So while we're waiting for that, let's build the create part of this thing. So if we put pipes, put one here, Will that connect the pipe to it? We'll see. Yes, it changed its direction. And these cauldrons were, let's see, right here? Nope, right here and here. This dirt back here. And we need to run some pipes from these, like this. One, two. And a pipe, and now a pump, and a pipe, and a pipe. There we go. And again, we can make a window and change the direction. So this is once we get the spinning. If there's any lava in those at all, it's going to pull it pull it in there. So we now need a, another cog right here. And now we just need some shafts to get this thing pulling see why I planned ahead just to make sure I had things lined up I'd make for a long video if I did all of the fumbling around okay so now that pump is turning there's no lava in those cauldrons yet oh there we go nice and here it comes let's break this and watch it it's flowing slowly we're going to see it come through here. Oh, it's pointed in the wrong direction. See that again? I don't know why that happens. So let's right click that. Oop, the pump. There we go. Now that arrow is pointing that way again. We should start to see some lava flowing. There it goes. And it's going to come up into our tank. slowly filling up and likewise we can expand this tank and we got lava generation that was pretty lucky that we got lava so quickly so that's slow lava but just slowly but surely we'll get some lava and we did it all in one day nice okay so we can just as we get more dripstone we can expand this out as much as we want to and just keep connecting pipes to it and fill this up quicker but we've already got six buckets of lava so it's actually going pretty quickly uh, so that'll fill up. We've just got one more thing to do, which is to, we need to get the coal coke out of here because that'll fill up just like the creosote oil will. And this is all filled up. So we could probably expand that, but I want to get the oil out of here and put it into buckets. So that's what we're going to do next. And that's basically the, the opposite of that process right there. I've got a few of these things made already. We'll put a mechanical pump, put that right there. So we can just put a small cog in between those two and that will spin that. And we need to get the coke out of here. So let's do this. Let's get a piece of wood and we'll put it right here. And we'll put it and we'll put a barrel on top of that like this. And then we just need to. Nope, not up here, not up there. That's wrong. That is wrong. Put them down here. Here and here, and run the belt. Oh, that's not what I meant to do, but that's okay. And run the belt here. And when we put a, let's see, an andesite funnel here, as soon as that belt starts running, that should pull, I think it'll pull the, oh, just like that. But because the belt's not running, it's not pulling anything. So as soon as that starts moving, that'll work. Also didn't mean to do that. 
So let's break those. Let's put this in here, which is its ultimate destination. Now we need to move this belt and we can do that like this. It's not right. We can just rotate that. That's going the wrong direction. So we can put another one on here and that's going in the right direction. And then if we just connect this guy to here, here it comes. Nice. Oh, we need a funnel. One more funnel right there and boom. All right, we're now collecting our, our cold coke. Awesome. And this is good because we need to run a belt in this direction in order to fill buckets with a, um, a spout, I think is what it's called. So we'll put another barrel here. And we'll put a shaft here with a belt right here like this. You know what? Let's move this back a little just to give us a little more room. This might fit, but let's do it like this. Let's put it out here just to give us some space. I think we can... It's possible to expand belts, I think, but I don't know how to do it. There we go, just like that. If I right-click with the belt, it... it Brings it up farther. All right, we're going to need another andesite funnel before we're done. But before we get there, we'll do this. We need a, another barrel here. And we can just put a barrel right on top of the belt. That'll work. So we're going to need two funnels. And then we just need to move this pipe over here. Right like that. And that... That pipe is touching here. I don't think it matters because the coke oven doesn't accept any fluids. So once this is flowing in the other direction like that, it's not going to go into the coke oven. It's, hopefully we'll just turn the corner. So the last thing we need is a spout, which is copper casing and dried kelp. I made a copper casing, but let's just make another one to see what that looks like. Strip a log, just like the andesite casing, and we hit it with some copper. Now we get a copper casing and we just make a spout. Very simple. Then we put the spout here. And whenever a bucket flows across this belt under there, it's going to fill it up. So let's sleep. And then we need two funnels and then we just need to and some buckets and then we just need to connect that. Okay, so andesite funnels those are easy. There we go. We've got two of those. We've got one bucket. Oops, 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 oops. Always putting funnels on the wrong thing. Okay, well, we can put that in there. That's how that's going to end up. And we need a small cog. And that is going to get the creosote oil flowing out of here if I put that on here so that should start to oh, reverse it again it's always doing that there we go and that's pushing it down this pipe and fills up our fluid container and if we put our two funnels on here and we put a bucket in here an empty bucket, it comes out. It's going to fill up. Nice. I love the animations with Create. And there we go. We've got fluid bucket generation. That is pretty awesome. Okay, so we need to do the same thing with this fluid container to get the lava into buckets. And I'm wondering if I can do something with valves and have a valve between them and share this, share the system between those two tanks. I don't feel like it's set up quite it's quite lined up the right way. We'll do that off camera or maybe in an upcoming episode. But for now, I think this pretty well covers processing fluids. And I think we're going to end the episode there. We looked at how to get creosote out of it, immersive engineering, coke furnace, and we are generating lava and filling up that tank right there with lava. I think that's a pretty good day's work. I hope you do too. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.